What's up, family? It's your girl, Dr. Shauna, and it is Sucker Free Sunday. I am so happy to be on with you guys. I know it's kind of late. My intentions were to come earlier, but let me tell you guys first what has happened to, so you can understand why I'm so late today. Today is Sunday. And something that I have been doing in my home that I hope that you guys are going to incorporate into your home is being mindset, being mindful of today being Sunday and the importance of having Sunday dinners, right? So after everything's all said and done, everybody is fed, the house is clean, the kitchen is clean, the leftovers are put away. I am now able to come and dedicate my time to you all. We're going to have a really good conversation. While you guys are coming on, let me tell you some changes that I'm making, and I'm not going to promise you I'm going to come on every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because that's not what's going to happen, but I want you to know what the topics will look like. So if I come on Friday, just so you guys can know, it will be Mental Health Fridays. If I come on Saturday, it's going to be Shooter Saturdays. We're going to talk about shootings, different types of shootings, different types of killings, not just police killings, but all types of killings. We're going to examine all of that. And on Sundays, we're going to do how to stay sucker free. So it's going to be sucker free Sundays. Today is sucker free Sunday. And I got some stories in the news I'm going to go over with you guys just so you can know what we're about to get into. And then I'm going to give you guys some strategies of what you all can start doing right now so that you can remain sucker free. Now, here's my disclaimer. The stories I am going to share with you all on a Sunday, I am not saying, I'm going to repeat, I am not saying that the victims that I'm going to share with you guys in these stories are suckers because they're not, they're victims. And I want... I want to be mindful of that because I don't want y'all to get confused with the language, but I want y'all to know how y'all can stay sucker free. Not that the victims are suckers, but some of us are doing things on a daily basis that put us in a category of being subjected to these suckers out here. And we're losing our lives out here to suckers, right? We're getting caught out there by suckers and we're going to have this conversation. So I wanted to make sure I say that clearly because some of y'all, y'all get so bent out of shape on words. And America nowadays is very sensitive. People can't say things anymore about y'all getting bent out of shape and trying to cancel everybody. So I want y'all to know the stories I'm going to share with you tonight is on Sucker Free Sunday, but not that the victims are suckers. With that being said, go ahead and share the video. I see all my people coming in. Somebody's watching from the Bahamas. Shout out to the Bahamas. How are you guys doing over there since the storm has came? Shout out to everybody in the Bahamas. Somebody says they do their Sunday night family dinners every, every Sunday here in Mississippi, and that's how it should be. Marie, I want us as a community to get back to doing Sunday dinners. Have your family over and it shouldn't stop. If one person is missing, it should still happen no matter what. Sunday dinners are important. I have somebody here sending their love from Memphis. I love every last one of you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. Share the video. If you're on Facebook, like and follow the Facebook page. I need you guys to be able to do that. If you are on YouTube, I need you to like the page, subscribe to the page by hitting the bell so you can be notified when I go live, like the page, interact in the chat. Let's get started. Yeah, it's Sucker Free Sunday. No disrespect to the victims. But when I read these stories or I review the video on some of these stories, I'm seeing right now that a lot of us get caught out there. So I'm going to have a conversation with all of y'all, especially those of you guys who are in relationships. I'm going to have a conversation with y'all because we need to get it together. It is not a joke. It is not a game. People in our community right now are being caught off guard every day, every day because we're not thinking. So the first story that I'm going to tell you about is about um, a man in Los Angeles. So we coming from LA, right? It was an 82 year old man in Los Angeles. Let me tell you a little bit about this victim. Y'all need to hear about this y'all because this can be you, this can be your uncle, this can be your cousin, this can be your neighbor, it can be your friend. Let me tell you about this guy. He was in a wheelchair. Did y'all hear about this story? And he went to Taco Hell, AKA Taco Bell, to go eat. 
And as he's sitting down having his dinner, a guy walks in to the Taco Bell, notices him, and, pre- and, and commits to stabbing this dude up. Stab him up. He got stabbed up while he's eating. Now, I want y'all to pay attention, pay pay close attention to this um this image here I'm sharing with you all. This man is sitting down. The door is behind him. His back is facing the door. And this guy comes in with a little skateboard. He looks around the restaurant. Y'all got to watch the video. Y'all got to watch the video. He looks around the restaurant, sees this man sitting there, and stabs him twice. Stabbed him in the neck and stabs him in the shoulder. Drops his skateboard. He runs out. The people behind the counter see this all happening. Obviously, the, the cameras and Taco Bell picks this up. So now the police are looking for this man that goes into a restaurant and stabs up this guy. I want you to understand what I said here. I I want you to understand the things that I said here. So let me go over some things one more time because some of y'all may not have gotten it. 82 years old. He's a man who has a wheelchair, although you can see his wheelchair beside him. He's sitting at the table, back facing the door. Y'all see where I'm going with this, right? Because we're about to stay sucker free. I'm about to show y'all how to stay sucker free. Back facing the door, enjoying his meal all up in his meal. He's hungry. He's eating. He's having a good old time by himself. Nobody else is in the restaurant. You don't see nobody else at any of these tables around here. Dude walks through the door. Dude looks to the left. Looks to the right. He notices Joker runs up to him and stab him up in the neck and in his in, in his shoulder. He and he flees. We gotta stay sucker free, family. We gotta stay sucker free. What is this guy's mistakes? Let me let me let me let me tell y'all something because I, I I want you to understand this. There are so many times I go into restaurants, I go into public facilities, I'm looking around, and I, I tell y'all all the time, I'm a people watcher. I train state workers in the state of New Jersey on active shooter. I understand certain things, right? So when I'm turning, when I'm going into a restaurant and I start seeing people sit with their back to the door, I'm looking at them like you were easy target right there. You don't know what the hell is going on behind you. Why is this man sitting with his back to the door? Now, I don't want y'all to think that I'm beating up on the victim because that is not what I'm doing. But this is a teachable moment. On Sundays, we're going to have teachable moments because I want y'all to remain sucker free because a lot of y'all do sucker things like this. Like y'all, y'all, y'all out there all willy nilly thinking everything is coochie cream. You're going to be all okay. And the next thing you know, you're going to get a knife to your neck. I'm not trying to be funny. We're always talking about as a community, we got to be alert. We got to know how to survive. We got to move in a certain way. But yeah, I find jokers like this every day doing silly things. Like sitting with your back to the door. Another thing I find now, I know ladies ain't going to like this. They're going to think that I think it's 1962 and it's just going to have to be 1962 today. But I'm going to say this anyway, ladies. You can write me emails. You can be upset. You can come to my Instagram and hit my Instagram and curse me out. You can do whatever you want to do. That's all cool. I'm good with it. But I am going to say this to you, ladies. Some of y'all, when I be going out there, y'all be in there, boot up with the boot thing, whether it's your husband, your boyfriend, whatever, a date, who cares? And y'all the ones facing the door and his back to the door. Like, I'm going to need y'all to do a better job at being alert of your surroundings. This is an 82-year-old man. His three biggest mistakes I can see that he made, and I want you all to know what mistakes you think he made aside from what I'm already saying. But his mistakes, A, is sitting with his back to the door. B, He has a lack of awareness. There's nobody else around him in that restaurant. It is just him. It is just him. There's nobody else in that restaurant besides him and the workers. And he's just having a a good old time eating his, his tacos from Taco Hell with the staff behind the counter. The door is where that black mat is. There is nowhere for this man to go. 
There's nowhere for him to run. He don't even know if he should be able to run. And this is what some of y'all do. Y'all in situations all close to the door, back to the door, all into your food or into your phone, not even aware of your surroundings. Not even understanding that every day you leave your apartment, you have to realize that you are a target. We're getting way too comfortable here. Many of us are getting way too comfortable when we're leaving our houses and we think that nothing is going to happen. We, we act like we are guaranteed to come back home. This man here is an easy target. And some of y'all are easy targets every day. Somebody's asking me, did he survive? The last time I checked the story, he did survive, Deneen, or he's in the hospital. The last time I checked the story, but see, the, the whole thing that I'm trying to say, Deneen, is, is will you survive if that happened to you? Are you leaving your house? See, the thing is, when we have a victim, we can sit back. We have the benefit and the blessing of being able to sit back and analyze the story and analyze what went wrong so we can know what we need to do to survive. That's what we do. And yeah, did he survive? That's, that's a great question, right? Sandra is saying that he has been hospitalized, right? That's a good question. But will you survive? Are you prepared to stop this from happening to you? It's unfortunate that it happened to this 82-year-old man. I get it. I understand it. And, and, and we can't do nothing about it. The incident with this 82-year-old man already happening. But the, the question is, can you survive? And I'm not just asking Deneen. I'm asking every last one of y'all. Because even though we may not have been this 82-year-old man on that day, we are that 82-year-old man on other days. When we're in La La Land, we sitting down and having dinner with people who don't know the first thing about survival. So if somebody walked in ready to take us out, we sitting down there with people who ain't even survivors. Who don't even know what to do? We, we are targets every single day. And that's why that's why I get upset at some of the conversations we have in our community where we're like, oh, we should do this and, and we should turn around. We need to do this. We need to do that. We can't even protect ourselves to survive. We talking about all the other stuff. This is something so simple. On Sundays, I'm going to be pointing out things that are so simple, but yet there are so many of us who are suckers. So many of us who are suckers, and this kind of things happen to us every day. So in this situation right here, what are the strategies for this man to survive? Not only this man, but us. I say this. If you don't have to, you really shouldn't travel alone. Not in this day and age. See, we've gotten too comfortable in our society where we assume, and listen to the word I'm saying, we assume that nothing is going to happen to us. We don't even think about anything happening, period. So maybe we don't assume that nothing is going to happen. We're not even thinking about the fact that something can happen. We're just walking through the world with no care in the world, like nothing is going to happen to us. We're traveling alone. There's so many of us that travel alone and it has become the new normal. We're not even worrying about the dangers of traveling alone. If you don't have to go eat alone or travel alone, then don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm guilty of that too because I like to move independently. I like to move in and out. But when I started to see the world becoming crazy... And we have normalized a criminalistic mindset. We have normalized negative, violent, and aggressive behavior. When I started to see the world shift and everybody is batshit crazy, I don't care who you are, everybody's crazy. I started to move differently. In some cases, I can't help it but to travel alone, but I prefer not to. And when I am traveling alone, I got to be hyper alert. Eating at restaurants 
alone, especially if you're a handicap or you're an elderly person, it's just not a good idea. When I thought about this case, this dude is 82 years old. I don't know about y'all, but I'm blessed to have a 97-year-old grandmother who is still alive and who still lives on her own in her own apartment in the same projects that my mother gave birth to me in at her mama's house. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? I got a 97-year-old grandmother who still lives alone in the same projects that my mother gave birth to me over 40 years ago. Over 40 years ago. I'm a 70s baby, right? And my grandma still moves through the streets of the Bronx alone, but I'm recognizing that people are crazy. And so when she tells somebody she about to go out or do something, what I notice, especially my brother, and there's a lot of my family members that do it, but especially my brother, he show up. And even though she yells at him and she screams at him and she doesn't really want him to make her feel like she is dependent on him, he still shows up because people in these streets are crazy. I remember one time my grandmother was getting on a bus and this one young guy, a young adult, crazy as ever, started arguing with my, my grandmother. My grandma's kind of gangster. You know, she getting fragile. She old, but my grandmother's gangster. I get it innocently. Everybody in my family get it innocently. She gangster. And she started going tip for tap for this guy. He pushed her and she lost her balance and broke both her hips. Had to get hip repair, Right? People in these streets are crazy. Crazy. So how many of y'all really think about that? How many of y'all realize that you are an easy target when you leave the house? How many of you are, and I'm going on to the next story, but how many of you guys think about you being an easy target? When I leave this house, I look around. I look everywhere and there's things that I do before I come home or blindly or willy nilly and just go into my apartment. There's things that I do because I realize that I am, when my man is not here, I am an easy target. Unless you get me in my house. Feel what I'm saying? You come to my house, you the target. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell y'all, you the target if you come to my house, the joke's on you. But if you get me outside of my house, I'm an easy target. And I recognize that. I recognize that. Another strategy is this man wasn't aware of his entries and his exit. What was his plan to escape? When you all go out, when you all go out, what's your plan of escaping? How many of y'all pay attention to the exits and the entries into the store, restaurant, whatever, public facility that you're going into. How many of you guys know how many ins and outs are there in a restaurant? How many of you know that? How often is your back to the entry of the store? If you don't have eyes on the entry of the store, who does? Who does? I'm looking at this video and I'm sitting here like this dude don't even have his eye on the door. He don't know who's coming and who's going. This dude is just sitting there eating his tacos at Taco Hell and not even paying attention. But there's so many of us like that. And even worse, even worse, so many of us have our children in situations like that too. We don't make a big stink about our children going to Wendy's after school when their little behind should really be home. They'll call you, hey, mom, or hey, dad, we're going to go to McDonald's, and then I'm coming home. we like, okay. We got too comfortable. Let's go on to story number two. Y'all understand what I'm saying, though? Sucker Free Sunday. This is Sucker Free Sunday. We're going on to story number two. His, his, now, this story right here, I got something to say to the non-melanated people. I got, I mean, I got something to say to everybody. Everybody. I got something to say to everybody. 
But I, I got something especially to say to non-melanated people. You're moving from your community into other people's community and you're trying to play hero. You are not a hero. You are not a hero. You are not a hero. This is a couple right here that moved from Milwaukee to Chicago. You heard about this story? Moved from well, Milwaukee into Chicago and they, they pulled up in their car Brittany Hans, Brittany Hans, and Patrick Stanton driving, I think it was Brittany's car, who cares, driving one of their cars, pull up, and they decide to park their video in an alley. All right, in an alley. Park their video. I'm saying this more than one time because I really need y'all to catch this. They parked their video in an I mean their, their vehicle in an alley. I don't know they're taking groceries out their bag. I don't know what the hell they were doing in the alley. But this alley right here, they parked their vehicle in the alley. And, and they noticed that something did not look kosher. They felt something wasn't right. They see these young men, three young men, lurking in the area over there in Chicago. And they, they identify these people as kids, maybe like teenagers. And these, 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 these teenagers, these young adults, these kids, ask this couple for the keys to their whip. Run them keys. Run them keys. Like, see, see, you cannot pull up on me to my run these keys and I want to have an argue. I'm like, give me a second. Let me get my baby at the back seat. Hold on a second. Let me get the key. Calm down. Calm down. You're going to have the key. I, I just want to get my groceries out and my children. You can, you can take it. I ain't going to call it. You ain't got to even act like this, this is not even carjacking. Baby, just go ahead and sit in the driver's seat. I got you. No, no big deal. Come on, come on, baby. Come out the car. Come out the car. Go on now. Y'all drive safely. Y'all drive safely. Drive safely. But no. Brittany and Patrick decides that they're going to take on these three thug, thugs that come in talking about running these keys. They decide, oh, hell to the no. You're not going to take my busted behind car. Now, I ain't going to lie to y'all. They ain't have no nice car. I know you're going to say it doesn't matter. I know some of y'all get real sensitive about these kind of things. You think that, you know, it doesn't matter how the car looks. It's their property. Whatever. Say whatever you want to say. It ain't that serious, baby. You can get another Pontiac. That's what the car looked like. I can't tell you if it was or was not a Pontiac, but it looked like a Pontiac to me, right? One of them American cars that ain't nobody buying. That's what it looks like to me. And they decide... That, you know, they're about to tussle with these jokers. And then these jokers pull out a gun. And this one right here with his head all bandaged up looking all stupid. is like, oh, shit, you know, he got a gun. <laughs> it ain't that serious. We ain't got to get all serious like that. And what does Brittany go and do? See, I get it, though, Brittany. I understand why you did it. I understand. But I need you to understand that Brittany went to run. And she hid behind a car. And she left Patrick there on his own so Patrick can uh, fight off the three armed assailants, right? So so Patrick gets bust over his, over his head. Jesus was calling him home. And I'm not lying to y'all. He said he saw it, everything went bright. When he got busted over his head, when you listen to the interview, he said everything went bright. And you know in our community where everything go bright, it is the Lord coming to the light, calling you on home. So he was about to get called home. He was. It went bright, but he, he got it all together. He said he remained calm. He got it all together. The third person was there. He started to tussle with the third person. He threw the third person in the car and he gets in the car with the third person. You see, y'all got to stop doing things like this. I'm just trying to tell you. He gets into the car with the third person that has a gun and he starts beeping his horn. I mean, who is going to save you in Chicago, Patrick? I'm just trying to say, y'all think it's funny, but I, I'm being dead ass serious. I still got a lesson for y'all. I, I just, I just, I, even though I'm making fun of Patrick, but some of y'all family in the melanated community, some of y'all do this too. Y'all really are tied to your possessions. I'm just saying, he gets in a car with the person that has a gun and he starts beeping the horn 
The dude want to get out the car. Patrick done locked the doors, beeping the horn. So the dude start busting those shots in the car. And meanwhile, back on 221 Front Street, Brittany's still hiding. While her man is fighting off three assailants. I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. He didn't get shot. Some bullets went through the car. Thank God he didn't get shot. And, 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 and he said that he heard. See this guy right here, Patrick. Patrick said he had heard one of the assailants say to the other person that had a gun, just shoot him. Just shoot him. Shoot him. And so he said, okay, um, I don't like that kind of attitude. That's what Patrick said. Patrick said he don't like that kind of attitude. Um, and that's when he pushed the third suspect into the car. Like he, cause he said, just shoot him, just shoot him. He said, I, all right. Um, okay. This is weird. I don't like that kind of attitude. He don't like that kind of attitude. He don't like that kind of attitude and push him in the car and, and, it, and the shots are fired. Some bullets come through the car. Nonetheless, the assailants run, they all get away. And Patrick now has a bandaged head. There's about three bullet holes in their car. And Brittany's saying she doesn't wish that on anybody. Meanwhile, Brittany was hiding behind a car the whole entire time. I think I hope the least thing that Brittany could have done was to call the cops while her boyfriend was, you know, fighting off the sellings and, and possibly getting his ass whooped. I think I think Brittany could have at least called the cops. I mean, I, I don't know what Brittany was doing or what she was not doing, but what I do know, Brittany was hiding. She was hiding. She was hiding. So here's the mistakes they made. All right. Because I, I want y'all to remain sucker free. We're gonna make we're gonna, we're gonna remain sucker free for today. Now it's easy for us to laugh at Patrick and Brittany because we know, we know, especially in our hood, especially in our hood, we know you just don't do stupid things like that. Like some people come into our hood. And they do stupid things and they really do think that um, some people are civilized and some people are not civilized, right? I'm just saying. But here's their mistakes. And I want y'all to learn from their mistakes too because some of y'all might do stupid things like this too. And we can't act like we all, we all are smart and we all are savvy and aware of the crimes that happens in certain communities because we all are not that way. Like I always tell my family, we are not monolithic people. We all do not have the same experiences. Everybody has different experiences and not everyone has an experience in the hood. Not everyone knows how to survive the hood. Just because they have melanated skin does not mean they know how to survive the hood. So I'm going to help all of y'all who are Black Patricks and Black Britneys. I'm going to help y'all to um, know how to survive, right? Like, first of all, rule number one, the mistake that they made was parking in the alley. Don't you ever, 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 ever in your whole entire life park your car. I don't care if it's a raggedy ass park car. Don't, don't ever park your car in an alley. Like, why would you park your car in an alley? Like, like who goes into an alley in Chicago, especially? Who goes into an alley in LA, in Compton? Who goes into an alley to park their car? Like, if you don't know nothing about the alleys, you should at least watch a movie and understand that you don't park your cars in alleys and you don't even walk through alleys. You don't even walk through aqueducts. You don't even walk in the park at night. These are some of the things, I don't know about y'all, but how I grew up living in the Bronx, those are some of the things that my mama used to say to us all the time. I don't care how long it take your funky behind to get home. Don't you walk through that damn park. Because we know a lot of stuff goes on in the park. But for some reason, this couple thinks it's okay to park in the alley. And some of y'all think it's okay as well. We can't pick on Patrick and Brittany because they are of, of the non-melanated community. And we, we through stereotypes, through, through stereotypes, we expect them to do dumb things, right? Through stereotypes. But the truth is, is a lot of us in our community that do dumb stuff as well. Don't park your car in the alley. That's right. See, somebody said, somebody said aqueduct. 
Oh, yeah. I never, let me tell you something. She laughing at me saying aqueduct. But you got to remember, we all from different areas, baby. I'm from the Bronx. And the aqueduct is not where you would park. You would not walk through the aqueduct at night, baby. Because there were crackheads in there. There was robbers in there. There was all, type, there was all types of people in the aqueduct. You, you do not go into, no. You walk. I don't care if that's the shortcut home. You take the long cut home. Like, you don't walk through the aqueduct. Right, this person from the Bronx, so she know it. She said Cretona, cause she from the Bronx. Cretona Park ain't no joke. You do not walk through. If you want to live, you do not walk through Cretona Park. Uh, she also said Claremont, cause she from New York, and that's how we get down. You do not walk through these parks. I'm just trying to tell y'all something. Everybody got one of these parks, or one of these aqueducts, or one of these alleys in their hood that we just know you don't go through. Right? Somebody said Viaduct is in Sean. Okay, Viaduct is in Sean, but in the Bronx is the aqueduct. You understand what I'm trying to say? And you don't go through no shortcuts. That's right, Diane. No shortcuts whatsoever. whatsoever. Mistake number two. Mistake number two. Y'all want to hold on to your material things. You listen, listen, don't don't get don't get it twisted. See, a sister like me, I'm 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 alert, I'm conscious, I'm aware. BX in the house all day, every day, right? Shout out to the BX, Miss A B. Shout out to you, BX all day. I'm aware, I'm alert, I'm conscious. But I like nice things. I like nice things, but I'm not committed. I'm not committed to them. I'm not because everything, everything I have is replaceable. You understand what I'm trying to say? Even down to my license and my credit cards, everything I have is replaceable. So if you roll up on me, you want the, the, the key to the G-Wagon, you can have it. There's GPS in there. They'll find you anyway. Mercedes, I got car jack. Can't locate that vehicle. They're going to find you anything, my love. They're going to find you anyway. Before you can even snap your fingers, they're going to find you anyway. Go ahead now. And besides, you can go ahead and have it. I want a new one anyway. So you can go ahead and have it. Have fun. Have your way. Why are you guys holding on to materialistic things? And, and homeboy is holding on to, I'm definitely letting the Pontiac go. Probably don't want that shit, no how. I'm definitely, anything American, I'm letting go. You can go ahead and have it. Shit, anything foreign, I'm letting go to. Anything, anything material, I'm letting go. You can have it, but especially a Pontiac R4, you can have it as well. Have your way, have fun. Joy run. Let me know what time you're bringing the car back home. You can drop it off and leave the keys under the sink. I mean, leave the keys under the seat. I'll get it. It ain't that serious. But this is what some of us do. Not just Patrick and Brittany. A lot of us do that. I hear stories every day with somebody pull up, pull out a piece, pull out a piece, and y'all trying to fight them off. Like, you fighting them off for what? For what? For some retros? Like, why are you fighting them off for, for an iPhone? Cause you got music on your iPhone and you want you want you want your music like y'all doing stupid. You ain't got cloud. You ain't got iCloud. You ain't got stuff to hide your stuff. Like why are we doing things like that? I'm just saying. Why are we doing stuff like that? Do not hold on to material things. Stop being attached to these things. Let it go. Like Leonia said, is a reaction. But I'm gonna need y'all to stop reacting. I'm gonna need y'all to stop reacting. And then another mistake that they made, this couple right here, see, Brittany and Patrick said when they pulled up in the alley to get out their car, they saw these people and they thought something wasn't right. They said something just ain't right. So, and, and, and we do that. We do that. We say, I just knew something wasn't right. I wish I would have followed my instinct. That is a mistake that so many people make when you do not follow your instincts you have this intuition and these instincts for a reason why not follow it how do you see see everyone is 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 too afraid of feeling like they're being judgmental i don't care what you say i listen i want y'all to hear it from me because i'm not afraid to say i know some of y'all i know some of y'all don't like people that are judgmental, but we all are judgmental, right? And you write Elrata. Elrata says, unfortunately, they will still kill you and you give up all your material possessions. Okay, so you write, in some instances, they will still kill you, right? But I'm not I'm not going to um, fight you. I'm, I'm just not. I'm just... I'm just letting you know. I get your point, Elrata, but I'll take my chances. You know, I, I'm not going to fight you for a call. 
I ain't gonna fight you for that. You and my phone, here's your phone. Go on now. Have a great day. See you later. Peace. I'm just gonna walk away, right? I'm just gonna walk away. Here you go. Right? So my whole thing, you wanna fight them with a gun, like you doing that to do what? Not everyone is lucky. I think I think letting somebody take your car, especially carjackers, and get away, there, there are less people being killed, right? And y'all let me know if I'm wrong. If there's a, a, a active carjacking, there are less people getting killed during an active carjacking that doesn't fight back versus the people who fight back in an active carjacking. But y'all got to let me know. Maybe Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you feel fight back because they're going to kill you anyway. I, I don't think that way. Not from the stats. Now, every, there's always an anomaly. Somebody's always going to get it. I get it. Every, somebody's always going to get it. But in my opinion, out of all, especially living in New Jersey where Newark is like a real serious carjacking area, right? More people survive who let them take the car versus people who fight them to try to keep them from taking the car. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. My whole thing is when you don't trust your instincts, you pull up and you see some jokers that look kind of funny, that look kind of weird, and you say you you say to your partner, this 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 looks kind of weird, and you get out your car anyway. I, why do we do things like that? Right? Why do we do things like that? Somebody said those stats don't apply in Detroit. We all stay strapped. I'm just saying, okay. But but what I'm saying to you is, I get I get what you're saying. You all stay strapped. I got it. Maybe maybe staying strapped stops you guys from getting carjacked. I, I I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in Detroit. I don't know. But what I'm saying to you, Kevin, because you know, are you telling me that even though you all stay strapped? Everybody getting shot up. They getting shot. You getting shot because they're gonna carjack you. Is that what you're telling? I don't know if carjack has happened like that at that at that rate of speed in Detroit as it does in other areas, especially like Newark, New Jersey. I don't know what that's like, but if we all stay shot, are we all having? If we all stay strapped, are we all having a shootout? Like what? What are you saying, Kevin? Are we all having a shootout for a car? I mean. I don't know. I don't know, right? But nevertheless, nevertheless, I, maybe 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 Kevin's gonna come back on and let me know that in Detroit, because everybody's strapped in Detroit, that either they don't get carjacked or there's a shootout at a carjacking. I I I just I just don't know. I I, I don't know. But nevertheless, my point I'm making is we're not trusting our instincts. Let me tell you about a short story before I go on to my next story. I don't know about y'all, but when I was a child in the Bronx, we had to walk to school or take public transportation to school. I know some of y'all, y'all, y'all kids are fluffy, right? And, and y'all drive your kids to school and everybody is scared of the pedophile. Everybody's scared of the pedophile, but nobody's scared of the human trafficker or the, um, the carjacker. I, I don't know. Like we do some crazy things, but nevertheless, we all drive our kids to school nowadays, right? But when I was growing up, that wasn't the way. And I remember when we was walking down the street, I saw these guys coming out. Like I told y'all, y'all say don't discriminate. I've been discriminating all my life. I'm not afraid to say it. And maybe this is not going to look good because I know you're going to be like, oh, she's a social worker. Why is she discriminating? No, I discriminate. I call it, I call it an assessment. I make an assessment and I go on that. Somebody said, yes, it's going to be a shootout, but not all the time. Damn, I ain't going to Detroit. I tell you that much, but I buy some property and rent to your asses. I'm just trying to say. But nevertheless, nevertheless, I call it an assessment. But if we want to have common language that we all can understand, judgment, yeah, judgment. So I'm walking down and I'm in, I'm in middle school and I had a gut feeling that these hoodlums that look like me, I'm just saying, I'm just telling y'all the truth. I mean, I mean y'all like to act like nothing ever happens, but I'm telling y'all the truth. Some hoodlums that looked like me was coming down the hill and they were rowdy, you know, they had no home training. And I just knew that one of these hoodlums was going to do something stupid. And I kept saying to my cousin and my friends, let's cross the street. 
and they didn't want to cross the streets because you know they was into guys and I was a tomboy, right? I wasn't into I wasn't into guys like that. So they was like, no, 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 we gonna stay. So we all walking down the hill, and I just knew in my gut something was gonna happen. So I took and I spit in my bag of chips. I spit. Oh, I know it's nasty. Oh. I spit in my bag of chips because I was like, these motherfuckers is gonna do something. These hood rats are going to do something. Sure enough, sure enough, they came and they started to bully us, snatched my bag of chips, and send us on our way. Now, I'm like, take it. Eat my spit, ninja. That's how I felt, but I knew something was going to happen. See, so many of us don't want to trust our instincts because we think that we're being discriminatory. I don't know about y'all, I'm not afraid to say y'all call it discriminatory as a as a researcher, a scholar, a clinician. I call it an assessment. I'm discriminatory. I am. I be walking. I don't care how you look. I'm just I'm just telling y'all the truth. L- laugh if y'all want. I'm telling y'all the truth. If I'm walking and y'all looking kind of funny, I'm prepared. I'm pre- I'm prepared. I'm prepared. The weapon is on me. I'm prepared. I'm just I'm just telling y'all the truth. I'm just telling you the truth because I try to trust my instincts. I try not to assume that nothing is going to happen to me. Instead, I assume that something is going to happen to me. Now, am I nervous and alert like everybody's going to get it by accident? No, not at all. Not at all. But I've learned from a young child to make that assumption. To make that assumption, these people, Patrick and, and Brittany, we can just change the names if we want to. We can call them Paul and Bianca. They were they were ignorant. They they knew they had a gut feeling that something wasn't right, and they ignored it. They ignore it, right? See, see, here's it right here. Somebody said, I refuse to live in the spirit of fear, but I hear you. I never said I lived in the spirit of fear. You see, this is this is the stuff. See, it's time for me to get off of this live right now. I'm, I'm going to tell you. So be still and know. I understand as a religious statement, you have be still, right? It's going to be peace, be still in my house, right? So anyways, I would say, I understand where you're coming from. But but this, this is how y'all get got. This is how y'all get caught out there. I refuse to live in fear. This is not about living in fear. This, this, this I gotta continue with the conversation, and, and and hopefully be still, kneel down and pray, and just hope everything's gonna be all right. Maybe, maybe this person will get it, right? Because maybe the pastor's wife that got shot in the head. Y'all ain't hear about that one. Y'all ain't hear about that. She was sleeping in her bed. She got shot in her head. Y'all ain't hear about that, right? But nevertheless, never she peace be still with her too. May she rest in peace. May she rest in peace. But what I'm saying to y'all is we got to stop all of that nonsense. This is not about living in fear. You see how we like to try to use this? Well, I refuse to live in fear. I don't live in fear. Peace be peace be still all right around me. Favorite blend, the favorite brand is a Glock. Peace be still around me. I'm not talking about living in fear. I'm saying don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. That's all, that's all I'm saying is don't be stupid. If you have a gut feeling that something is not right in your mindset, and I'm not saying, you know, be still and, and, and no, I'm not saying this is your mindset. I'm just using it as an example. But if your mindset is, well, I refuse. I don't care if he's pointing a gun at my head. I just trust that nothing's going to happen. Okay. Everybody get it. Everybody get it. This is not about living in fear whatsoever. This is about understanding that when your body is talking to you, when your spirit is speaking to you about something, you got to listen to it. Because I think that a lot of us think that magical things are going to happen. I think a lot a lot of us think that, you know, ooh, when I have this, I have this, 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 I have this faith. I have this faith and I'm I'm good. Okay. You keep having that faith. Keep having it. But nevertheless, here's the strategy to survive. First of all, you guys are walking, are coming home, driving, and I want y'all to think about this. I have to say, I know y'all don't like the fact that I'm with an officer. 
I know y'all don't like the fact because I know how my community is. Y'all like anti-police and I get it. I get it. I, I'm, I'm anti-cop killers. Like I'm not cop killers. I'm anti-cops killing people, right? I'm anti that all the way, every day, all day. Y'all already know how I feel. But I also know that that me being a partner of somebody who is in the force, I also know that I get certain protections and certain ways of seeing things that the average person doesn't get. I'm not saying you guys don't get it. I'm saying the average person doesn't get it. And one of the things I, I remember, like he was annoying the hell out of me, my partner, with this phone call. He had to tell me 45,000 times that when he, when he left the house, he saw somebody that didn't look right. He didn't look kosher. He wasn't comfortable with this person. And so he was looking for that car that he saw and he called it in to the local police to tell them that he wants a car to come around and, and circle the community to make sure that not only I was safe, but we were all safe in the community that we live in. But nevertheless, when I when he knew I was on my way home, he called and he's like, don't you just go into that house. I want you to circle the community, circle it a couple of times. Look for this kind of car before you go into that house. And when you get in the house, get in that house right away, lock the door, don't, don't move slowly. And even though I know he means well, I was like, I know, I know, I know, I know. And then I had to stop. I had to stop for a second because the reality is, even though I know this, my comfort would have gotten away of that. Right? That's what I'm saying to y'all. Even though I know this, I already know these things, but my comfort would have gotten in the way of that. I would have came home. Come on, get it. Come on, get out. Told my kid to get a car, go open the door, would have went in the house, take my little sweet time. I would have been taking my groceries out the bag, leaving it on the steps, going back in the car, driving the car to the back of the house, putting the car in the back of the house, walking all slowly, going to going to the front of the house, get the groceries, bring it to the front. I would have been like La La Land, hoo, 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 hoo. I can't do nothing outside of my house. Everything I can do is in the house, not outside of it. So what I say to you all is y'all should be doing things like that. Before, especially if you are a woman by yourself, before you park your vehicle, get out and walk into your house like you in La La Land, be aware of your surroundings. Circle your community. Pay attention to who's in their car sitting down, not doing anything, right? Pay attention to cars that look kind of suspicious, people that look kind of suspicious. Pay attention. Y'all ain't going to like this. Profile. Profile. Now, we don't want the police officers to profile, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. We don't want the cops to profile on racist stuff. But y'all need to be racist and profile. I'm just saying. Profile. And profile everybody. Everybody. You know, if you live in an all-black community, you see a joker that, that ain't all-black. Profile. I'm just trying to say. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to tell y'all the truth. Make a mental note. I'm not saying go up to the car, but make a little mental note about who's in your community. I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to say, but we're so comfortable that we're not doing that. And not just women, men are comfortable too. Cause I, I see a lot of stories out there, fellas, but y'all getting gap. Y'all, y'all getting set up left and right, fellas. Y'all getting set up by dudes and, and, and females. Y'all getting set up left and right because y'all not thinking. You're not thinking. Who's in your community? You got to see You gotta see the shot coming a block away. You got to see the shot coming. You got you to gotta know what's going on in your community. Profile. Right? Profile. You see a joke in your community, get bold enough to... to she, if you got you, you to gotta approach... The right way, obviously. Don't be superhero. But if you got to approach, approach. Approach. I'm just saying. The second thing I want y'all to do when you're coming home and you know something ain't right, don't park your car in some dark area. Try to find a well-lit area. I know some of y'all don't have the option of having your own parking space or having a garage. I know some of y'all, that's not an option. That's not an option. So you, you should already know. You should already know 
what blocks you should not park your car. If you got to stay in front of your building until a parking spot becomes available, do that. I know some of y'all be tired, especially when we in New York City. New York City parking is terrible in New York City. But I don't understand for the life of me how some of y'all come home 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. You park four or five blocks away from your house and you walking by yourself and you got nothing on you for protection. I don't understand that for the life of me. When I go see my grandma, like I told y'all, she's 97 years old. She's still living the same projects my mother gave birth to me in. In my grandmother's apartment in the back room. The same exact apartment, the same exact building and location. When I go to see her, and if there is no parking on her community, I park in that parking garage and I pay my $18, $20. I sure do. I don't play no games because I ain't trying to walk. Up. I'm not trying to walk through no projects. I'm just trying to tell y'all. So y'all may not like to hear that. That's okay. Y'all say things about Dr. Shauna all the time, saying she on a high horse, whatever. My life is on a high horse. That's how I look at myself. You should look at yourself the same way. Listen, I'm trying to get home to survive. You understand what I'm trying to say? So if I park right across the street in a parking garage and I pay those people to watch my car and I walk right across the street and go in my grandma's building, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to go four blocks, three blocks down in some other way and walk or not in high bridge. You crazy as hell. You get shot at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And how, you crazy as hell. You would get raped in the hallway at 12 o'clock p.m. You crazy. I am not. I don't even make eye contact. I didn't say, good morning, how are you? How you? Nope, nope. Y'all all savages. Everybody's a savage. I'm a savage. We all a savage. I ain't doing it. I'm just, I'm just trying to say. If I, if I got to circle my own community to make sure I'm safe, why would I let my guard down in my grandmother's community? I'm just trying to say, you're not safe in no damn community. That's what I'm trying to say. But some of y'all get so comfortable. Y'all get so comfortable and y'all assume I lived here forever. I can't see anything happening to me. It is always the person with that kind of mindset that something happens to them. And then the last thing I want to say is strategies to survive in this situation is don't be a superhero. Patrick and, and Brittany were trying to be superheroes. Why were Patrick and Brittany being superheroes? You fighting off three armed gunmen? Like, Who are you trying to prove something to? Who? And, and some of us, we, we out here thinking that we invincible. Some of us thinking that, you know, I wish, I wish, a, I wish a ninja would. I used to have that attitude too. You know, I, I know y'all can imagine. Well, some of y'all, y'all, some of y'all don't imagine it. And that's okay. Y'all, I, I want y'all not to imagine it. But those who understand where I'm from, you, you can imagine what I'm talking about. You know, we all have that attitude that I wish a ninja would attitude. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I wish a ninja would be sitting in my chair. I wish a ninja would try to try me. I wish a ninja would bump into me. I wish a ninja would try to rob me. Because we have this mindset like we're invincible. We have this mindset like nothing's going to happen to us. You're going to say I wish a ninja would and a ninja is going to do it and your behind is going to be unprepared because you just talking smack. You're going to be unprepared. I'm just saying. So let's go on to that next story. The last story, and I'm out of here, y'all. Y'all been so good today. Listen, if you on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give the channel a thumbs up. All right? If you on Facebook, like and follow the page. Interact with me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, I really want to thank y'all. But this last story, I know this is Sucker Free Sunday. And again, I'm going to reiterate because this last story is kind of sensitive. So I'm going to reiterate, when I say Sucker Free Sunday, I'm not saying the victim was a sucker or the victim didn't know how to stay sucker free. I respect the fact that these victims have their stories and they deserve the empathy and the compassion. I get that. And for this show, the focus isn't on honoring or remembering the victim, although you all should choose to do that. I understand that. But it's more like, what can we learn from what happened to the victim so it won't happen to us because we're not exempt. I want to make that very clear. The last story I bring y'all is also out of Arcadia, Chicago, I think it is. Or it's, I think it's Chicago. What's going on with Chicago? Y'all crazy in Chi Town. I ain't going to go visit y'all. I'll, I'll stay my behind in Jersey. But nevertheless, 
in Arcadia, there was a 69-year-old woman who was a landlord. And what she did was she would rent rooms out in her house. And she rented to this 36-year-old woman. Let me, let me see if I can get this woman on the, on the screen because you guys see how, how these people look. So y'all can get a visual. That's the only reason I want to show you because I want y'all to get a visual of what I'm talking about, okay? So this woman, this 69-year-old woman, the one that's in the red shirt and the glasses, this 69-year-old woman, she was known as somebody who likes to help everybody and, and welcome people into her home. So she was renting rooms. There's, there's, there's so much to the story that's just not right. But she was renting rooms in her house. And this woman here that looks like a crybaby now, she want to cry now. Why every time y'all get arrested, y'all want to start crying? Cry when y'all about it. Don't cry when, when you're arrested. Like, But nevertheless, this 36-year-old woman, Sandra Kalua, rented a room in this woman's home along with some other residents. And this lady, this 36-year-old, was getting in arguments with the other tenants in this woman's home, in the 69-year-old woman's home. And so they were complaining to the landlord about problems that they were having with this 36 year old you see look like she crying and so the landlord went and she changed she changed the lock on two different doors um to try to prevent whatever was happening from happening she goes and she approaches the the victim by putting an eviction notice on her door the victim i mean not the victim she approaches the killer the 36 year old over here with the the yellow hoodie looking like she crying she she puts an eviction notice on her door to let her know you gotta get up. You, listen, you gotta get up out my house. You crazy. Everybody in the house has problems with you. This is just not working now. Go rent a room somewhere else. I mean, I know this is Chicago, there's a lot of rooms you can rent. You just can't rent rooms here. So she puts an eviction notice on the door. The 36-year-old gets the eviction notice and she decides that she's gonna um approach the landlord. Landlord's at her apartment regarding this eviction notice. They get into an argument. The tenant that's in the basement hears them arguing, hears something crash, hears the 69-year-old's voice, and then she doesn't hear anything anymore. So that somebody in the house calls the cops and files a missing persons report. Meanwhile, the 36-year-old calls a tow truck to come tow her truck to the mechanics. I guess she was trying to get her escape vehicle. She had the lady's body with her in the bag. She gets to wherever she was going, puts the bag inside a green bin, proceeds to the mechanic shop. They all knew something was kind of weird and off with her. They, they, they stalled and held her over until the cops came and she pulls a knife out on a, the, the, the tow truck driver, all types of crazy things. Everybody knew that she was crazy. Everybody knew that she was not wrapped too tight. But nevertheless, she cut up this lady's body like she was Jeffy Dahmer's niece. Cut up this lady's body. She kept all types of body parts in the freezer and the torso of this lady, a 69-year-old woman. The torso is still missing. I don't know if they found her torso, but as of the last story, the torso was still missing. How to stay sucker free. How to stay sucker free. Now, again, I want to say I am not saying that this 69-year-old woman became a sucker, right? Or, you know, didn't know how to protect herself from this 36-year-old sucker, however you want to look at it. But what I am saying is some mistakes were made. Now, I know in our, in our community, you know, in order for you to keep your house and, and, and keep your money flowing, we come over some real, some real creative ways. We rent rooms out to people. We try, we try to hustle. And it's unfortunate that a 69-year-old had to hustle that way to keep some money in her pocket and to keep her home. That's kind of it's unfortunate that our elders cannot be taken care of. It's, it's, it's out of control. But a lot of people do it. Even in our community, a lot of people rent out rooms like it's like it's nothing. A lot of people have Airbnbs that they stay in themselves and renting their rooms out to new tenants, tenants coming into their apartments or into their houses constantly all the time, but because they need money or want money in some cases, they do these kind of things. They want people to share in and paying for their rent or share in or paying for their mortgage, whatever the case is. 
If you are going to do that, you should not be confronting your tenants alone. That's mistake number one. Why would you confront your tenants alone? I'm, I'm asking a question. Why would you take it upon yourself to be about it, about it, to get this woman out of your house? Like you 69 years old and you look fragile. You, you look like, see, you 69 years old, you look fragile. You don't even look like you can properly protect yourself or take care of yourself. And you are approaching this crazy looking woman to get up out your house. I just don't understand why we do things like that. So the mistake that she made was approaching this tenant by herself. The second mistake that she made, honestly, to be honest with you, is renting rooms in your house with the, without the proper, the proper security measures. What was the safety plan? And a lot of us do that. You guys have people in your houses that y'all don't know from, from a hole in the wall. Y'all don't know from a can of paint. What is your safety plan? What kind of security measures do you have in place if one of your clients or one of your tenants are kind of crazy? What is your safety plan? If you're going to rent your apartment, the mistake number three that she made is why, why are you going to live there with a whole bunch of people you don't know? I know, I know you trying to get your bills paid. I understand you trying to keep your house, but I'm being real serious. Why would you live in the same house that you written rooms to a whole bunch of people that you don't know? Do you not understand that that sets you up? That makes you an easy target. See, money makes people do all types of crazy things. And I'm not saying this person here wanted money, but I'm saying in general, you got to you got to restrict yourself from certain things. Money make people do crazy things. People who want access to what you have, they watch you, they see how they how you move, what you have. They want access to these things. You set yourself up because you're putting yourself right there in the fishbowl for everybody to examine what you have and what you do not have. Why would you be in the same house if she was in the same house, but even if she wasn't, I know a lot of y'all are in the same house with people you rented rooms to. Why would you be in the same house with a joker you really don't know? Setting yourself up. Why? So here's some, some strategies. Somebody said she had no social network. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. So there are still things that you can do, even if you have no social network, even if even if she didn't have any kids that can come through or some grandkids that can come through or some neighbors that will come through. There's always 911. The police can come through this. Listen, I'm just trying to say. I'm just trying to say there are some strategies for survival for people who are in this person's position where they have strangers living in their home for a dollar, right? That's right. D staff said that's why family is important. And I agree with you. And the, and the reality is some of us, we, we biologically have family, but we don't have family, right? Not everybody has the blessing of having family members that support them. And that's when you have to call on all your resources. And there are resources there. I am not approaching somebody. See, the thing is a lot of us, when they get to that age, 69 years old and 70 years old and 80 years old, 90 years old, we think that people are going to respect the elders and that nobody would do anything horrific or crazy like that to elders, especially in the black community. Because we, we we say things like, you know, you better not, you better not do nothing, nothing wrong to the, the elderly or children. God protects babies and the elderly, right? We always say things like that. We always like to say nice little tropes like that, that, you know, make us feel good. No. Everybody's open game, including the elderly. Everybody is open game. But here's some strategies for y'all. And then I'm out of here. If you're going to have all these people in your houses living with you, helping you to pay your mortgage, your bills, or whatever the case is, you got to approach these people with somebody. You cannot approach these people alone. Never, ever ever approach these people alone. Number two, you got to understand that 
if the tenants are complaining in the house, you got you 69 years old, you have no back end, you have no friends, no family. Maybe you're not 69 years old. You could be 25 years old getting your little hustle on, but you you ain't Superman and you ain't superwoman. The best thing for you to do is to tell the other tenants, the other roommates, listen, call the cops and get a police report. And then once you get that police report, give that police report to me so I can go ahead down to housing court and get her evicted. I'm not doing their dirty work. They calling me. I'm 69 years old. Why are you calling me at 69 years old to come in there to break up a fight with you and Cuckoo Quack? Why are you calling me? I'm not. No, I'm not playing around with somebody's mental instability. I'm not playing around with that kind of stuff. Listen, go ahead and call the police. Get a police report. And when you get that police report, get a copy of it. Give it to me so I can take it down to the housing court. She's 69 years old. Number three, another strategy to stay sucker free. If you can, now, I don't know if grandma, 69, I don't know if she's a grandma or not, but I don't, I don't know if the senior is going to be armed. I don't know if she's going to have a, a, a gun on her or whatever. I mean, it's, if it's her house, you got castle law, right? No matter where you go, you allowed to protect your house. You know, get your gun, get your permit, get your, your pistol. Make sure you can handle it. Don't don't get no 25 and don't get no 2-2. Ain't going to put nobody down. They're going to laugh at you, get up and walk away. Don't get nothing like that. Get something that's going to um, put them down or at least knock their asses down. You know, make them bleed. Get something, but you need you need to get something. You need to get something. You want, if you're going to have all these people in your house, why aren't you armed? Why aren't you armed? I'm just saying. It's a crazy world. And it's crazy to me. I close by saying this. It's crazy to me how many people are so unaware. How many people are so unaware? Somebody said that nut would have found a way to kill anyway. Shotguns are necessary. It ain't safe. Listen, that that nut would have found someone to kill but would not have killed me that day. I'm not going to knock on your door. And have a conversation with you about an eviction and there's nobody around me. And everybody's complaining about you. I'm sure the complaints let this lady know how unstable this woman was. And you still went to that house by yourself. You see, the reason why that kind of stuff happens, family, is because so many of us, so many of us are are unaware how at risk we really are. People assume all the time that something is not going to happen to them. Some of us right now on this live, in this chat, make that same assumption that something is not going to happen to them. This is Sucker Free Sunday. Sucker Free Sunday. You want to stay sucker free? The only way you're going to stay sucker free is to assume that something will happen to you. That's how you stay sucker free. I'm not telling you that's 100% foolproof, but it's better than having no proof. That's all I'm saying to you. You can't sit out here walking around life acting like you are exempt. What makes you so special that nothing's going to happen to you? What makes you so special? And so many of us are like that. We swear to God, we say things like, the only thing you have to do is just mind your business and nothing's going to happen to you. That's what you really think? Listen, I've been on this earth 57 years. Ain't nothing ever happened to me. Okay, it might happen to your ass at 59 years. How about that? Do y'all not see what's going on in the news right now? This is a wild, wild west. All through the United States of America, everybody acted up and acting crazy. They acting up and acting crazy in places that have never acted up and act crazy. And for some reason, so many people assume that it would never happen to them. We say all the time, well, use your common sense. There's no such thing as common sense anymore. People don't have common sense anymore. You understand what I'm trying to say? People are out there doing all types of stupid things, like the guy with all due respect sitting with his back to the door. What you and I might think is common sense, he don't think is common sense. Some of us sleep with our doors unlocked. I'm just saying. I understand that sometimes, you know, you might get a little bit comfortable or you might go to sleep and forget to lock your door. I understand that, right? But don't make that a habit. Some of us sleep with our doors un- un- uh, unlocked. 
because because common sense ain't that common anymore. And we just assume that nothing's going to happen to us. People make assumptions every day of what a violent community looks like, assumptions. What a violent person looks like, assumptions. Assumptions. What violent restaurants and businesses looks like, what violent schools look like. So they convince themselves that as long as I don't run into this stereotype, I'm good. That's what people think all the time. Their assumptions. Make no assumption. The only assumption you should have is everybody. Everybody can get it. That's the, that's the assumption you should have every day. Everybody wants to get you. Now, I'm not saying that that's true, but I'm saying if you walk around with that mindset, you're on high, high alert. But people don't want to do that. They say, I don't want to walk around like that. I don't want to have fear. I'm not going to do that. That's cool. No problem. Do you, boo. There's something going on with a lot of y'all with this hyper independence. You don't have to ask nobody to come with you. You don't need no help. You can go to all these places by yourself. Nothing's going to happen to you. I've been doing this forever by myself. Nothing's ever happened. Y'all have this hyper independence. And I know it because I also struggle with hyper independence. I'm so accustomed to moving in and out by myself. I'm a lone wolf. But then I start to think, okay, yeah, maybe I don't want to do that anymore because this world is getting crazy. Some of y'all don't even want to share your locations. Y'all got iPhones and maybe your partner might say share location with them, but y'all feel like somebody's spying on you or trying to control you. So you don't even want to do that. You're not even strategizing. You're not even thinking. No, some of your partners are stalking you. I, I get it. But I'm just saying, at the very least, y'all got to have that kind of conversation. But some of y'all have this hyper independence that you don't even want to consider those things because it's going to make you feel control. And to your ass get caught out there, then you're going to want everybody to be a part of it and to protect you. And last but not least, last but not least, and I'm out of here, is... And I say this on more than one live. And y'all heard me say this again. It's the last thing I'm going to say. And then I'm gone. How many of you all have a strategy, a survival strategy when you leave your house? What is the strategy? How many of y'all have that? How many of y'all communicate your whereabouts? Or do you feel it's controlling? How many of y'all have children where y'all share group chats or you share your locations or you share your travel plans? How many of y'all do that? How many of y'all do that? I'm asking y'all. I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead as asking y'all. How many of y'all do that? Because I'm so sick and tired of we having the wrong types of conversations. We need to be having conversations of how we can stick together, strategize, make sure we every member of our household is safe. How many of us do that? Somebody said, I do, but my folks don't. Somebody says, I do. Um, my folks don't. I do have Life 360 with my family. What's Life 360? Somebody said, my mom thinks I'm overreactive, right? This is what I'm just saying. Somebody said, I've been trying to get my family on that page forever, right? Somebody says, I have a half of one. Right. But what I'm saying to you is, especially especially those of us who have young children and we buy ourselves and we are unarmed. This is not a game. This is not a game. If we're talking about strategizing, we, we, we're so concerned. I'm going to say this and I promise you I'm out. We're so concerned about the white man and the Karens out there and what they're going to do to us. <laughs> I know you ain't going to like it. I know you ain't going to like what I'm going to say because I know how some of y'all, y'all want to be angry. And I get it. I'm angry too. But I also watch your asses. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't know if y'all do, but I, I watch y'all. I, I be looking at some of y'all melanated people with the side eye. I'm just, I'm just saying. Everybody get it with me. 
everybody get it with me. Right? Good. So Taylor said, this is what this is what we are here for, community. Taylor says she has Life 360, and she said Life 360 is an app that lets your people see your location. My mama set it up. That's a great thing. It's a great thing. I have iPhone, and I share my location, right? And if you don't have that, you can get Life 360. My point is, this is not somebody trying to keep tabs on you. This is about understanding the world we are living in today. Crime is on a rise. And the criminals out here nowadays, they have no remorse. They have no fear. It has become so normalized. And your politicians can't save you. Your, your, your police can't save you. They're getting shot too. Like, are y'all listening to the news? There was a story where this, this woman reported domestic violence. We all know domestic violence situations are serious, right? And, and she's in the house with federal agents who are taking her report. And her husband comes in at that time, shoots at the federal agent, gets in a shootout with that federal agent, shoots and kill her. He gets shot. He makes it over to his mama's house before he dies. Like, this is not a safe world. Right? Somebody said, my aunt put Apple AirTags in my niece's sneakers. Apple AirTags are dope. A lot of people use it for their luggage when they travel, but you can use that and you could drop that in your kid's book bag. Y'all worry about people snatching your kids from school. That's the way you should, you should go about right there. Put dropping an Apple AirTag in your child's book bag just in case somebody snatched the joker up. Forget about the book bag. Put that sucker... Put it in their clothes or in a pocket on their body, something like that. Put it, put it somewhere, so you can know where your child is at. Like it's silly, and I don't care if your child is a teenager. I'm just saying, it's no joke out here. And here's this one right here. What does the sneakers fall off? Then de staff with your ass. Put it in more than one location. Get two of them suckers just in case the sneaker falls or put it somewhere. I mean, come on. Come on now. Okay, come on now. I'm just saying, you you got to you gotta um put it in, on a key ring. You can put it on a key ring, but if they leave their keys away, you ain't going to get them. My point is, there are so many new technology things or technological things out there that we can do to ensure some of our safety, right? People are, I can't, I can't with y'all today. I'm out. I'm done. Somebody said Apple tag earrings too. Do they really got Apple tag earrings? Shit. They got Apple tag earrings? Is they gold? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Somebody says, yes, because people are out here dropping air tags under your vehicle so they can follow you home. People doing that too. And that's how powerful air tags are. So if the if the criminals using it, you know your ass should be using it too. I'm just trying to say, like, right? I'm just trying to say, right? Somebody said ninety five percent of all black homicides are committed by other blacks, and we so consider we so afraid about somebody else killing us. Now I'm not telling you to close your eyes. I say everybody's a suspect. Everybody get it. But I'm scared of your jokers too. I'm just going to tell y'all the truth. The joker that was in our neighborhood, he was not a white man watching any of us. He was a black man. And my man said he looked like, like an old washed up Michael Jordan with a hanging earring in his ear. I, I'm just saying. Driving a silver navigator, some sort of leaking navigator, something. I'm just trying to say. Everybody's a suspect. And that's the mindset you have to have. Everybody is a suspect. Everybody's a suspect, including your 15 year old son. Y'all ain't hear about that story either. He kidnapped his mama and killed her ass and dumped her body. I can't make this stuff up. Everybody's a suspect, even your own kids. Everybody is a suspect. Listen, family, I'm out. If you're on Facebook, y'all go ahead. And like and follow the page. Interact with us. 
stay there with us. It's all about good things. On Sundays, we're going to have Sucker Free Sunday. So if I come on on Sunday, you know I'm talking about ways that we can stay sucker free. If I come on on Saturday, we're talking about shooter Saturdays. We're going to talk about the shootings that are out there that's happening. I need to be aware, not just police killings, but all types of shootings. We need to be aware and we're going to talk about strategies with that too. If I'm talk, if I come on on Friday, y'all know it's Mental Health Fridays. You know, I'm going to address some mental health situation that we got to really look at. But all of that said and done, if you are on YouTube, I want y'all to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Don't be a sucker. We're going to stay sucker free today. Hit the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. For all my ladies out there that have gotten your pheromone, this is turn off the lights. All your pheromone candles, massage all your candles, you rub your boo down. Yeah, I know. I'm so nice. But, you know, you massage all your candles, all your other pheromone, which is pure instinct, which is the oldest one around and is still just as effective. You go ahead to helpingcouplesreconnect.com. 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 Get your pheromones, get your massage oil candles, and you will get your item shipped to you. I appreciate every last one of y'all. Y'all stay blessed up. Y'all stay bossed up. Y'all stay strapped. Keep your head on a swivel. Don't sit with your back to the door. Don't park in no alleys. And don't knock on nobody's door by yourself trying to be about it, about it. I'm just trying to say. I'll speak to y'all all hopefully on Friday with Mental Health Fridays. Have a great night.